12 miles up U.S. Highway 6 at the Highway 89 Junction in Spanish Fork Canyon, one can find the mysterious remains of what appeared to be a town. What was once a thriving railroad support station and farming community is now a muddy and flooded wetland. Foundations, mud, and debris scattered about the valley may be unassuming at first glance. However, these remains tell a story written by negligence and personal loss. This is the story of Thistle, Utah. The valley that Thistle was settled in was used by the Ute Native American tribe for trade long before European settlers arrived. In fact, it's documented that Chief Tabi and Chief Petitney conducted seasonal migrations in the spring and fall through this canyon. In the 1870s, European settlers began constructing homesteads in the area. This resulted in multiple clashes between settlers and a small band of Ute natives that resided in the canyon. The Ute natives were forcibly relocated by the U.S. federal government as a consequence of the fighting. With the relocation of the natives, the settlers were free to build and expand. Thistle was a railroad town, much like its sister city Soldier Summit, located farther up the canyon. The first settlers to break ground in Thistle were Mormon migrants. An example of such migrants were the Pace family from Nauvoo, Illinois, who took to cattle ranching in the region for more than five generations. The economy of Thistle was largely based on farming until the 1890s, when the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad made its way through the area. In 1880, the town had a humble population of 81 residents. With the arrival of the railroad, the population grew to 365 residents by 1890. The first railroad track laid through Thistle was constructed by the Utah and Pleasant Valley Railway in order to support the coal mines near what's now known as Schofield Reservoir. The Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad acquired the line in a foreclosure sale in 1882. Subsequently, they tore out and rebuilt the line to their standard. The railroad established facilities in Thistle to service and prep trains for the steep climbs ahead of them. Helper engines were placed in Thistle to aid the trains in their climb up to Soldier Summit. The town also hosted a meal service for passenger trains until the introduction of dining cars. The construction of the Marysvale branch line brought more rail traffic to Thistle, and the town grew with the railroad. In 1917, Thistle reached its peak population at around 600 residents. The town was a thriving community with machine shops, non-railroad depots, restocking buildings, general stores, a post office, a barber shop, a saloon, a pool hall, bakeries, and restaurants. The two-story schoolhouse built in 1911 was Thistle's largest structure. The town saw a gradual population decline from 600 residents in 1917 to 248 residents in 1950. From the 1950s to the 1980s, Rio Grande maintenance personnel started noticing increasingly unstable ground downstream from Thistle. The railroad tracks required increasingly frequent repairs due to the gradual creep of the downstream hillside. The issue was never fully investigated by the railroad. In 1982, the remnants of Hurricane Olivia brought record rainfall to the region, and the winter of 1983 brought record snowfall. As the packed snow melted, the mountains became saturated with water. In April of 1983, track deformation was a frequent and serious issue. On April 13th, a Denver and Rio Grande Railroad track master flew to Denver to attend an emergency staff meeting to address the issue. That same day, a Utah Highway Patrol officer struck a newly formed buckle in the highway, which launched him into the ceiling of his patrol car. A fully staffed round-the-clock maintenance crew was struggling to keep U.S. Highway 6 and U.S. Highway 89 open. Trains wouldn't move any faster than 10 miles per hour through Thistle and were followed by maintenance staff who actively worked to keep the track aligned as the ground beneath it creaked. On April 14, 1983, at around 8.30 p.m., the Rio Grande Zephyr passed through Thistle. It would be the last train to do so. All other trains were turned away. By April 16th, the tracks were buried underneath the still-moving earth. On April 17, 1983, the slow landslide, now identified as a complex earth flow, blocked the flow of the Spanish Fork River. Highway 6 and the remaining railroads were abandoned, and plans were established to reroute the highways through new corridors. 
Engineers evaluated the earth flow and estimated that it would eventually form a dam around 300 feet tall. A mandatory evacuation order was established for the residents of Thistle, who were forced to evacuate to the town of Birdseye, five miles to the south. Many residents had less than two hours' notice to gather their belongings before the floodwaters inundated the city. By April 19th, the waterline had reached the rooftops of the 22 previously occupied houses. President Ronald Reagan issued the first Presidential Disaster Area Declaration for the state of Utah after a plea from Governor Scott Matheson for federal aid. The landslide was moving at 2 feet per hour, burying Highway 6 in 50 feet of dirt. The resulting dam was 3 miles long and 200 feet deep. Work commenced to reroute the Spanish Fork River, and an evacuation advisory was delivered to the residents of Spanish Fork in the case that the natural dam had failed. Engineers estimated that, if the dam failed, Spanish Fork residents would have 30 to 45 minutes notice before water reached the city. Thistle was decimated. Any wooden buildings were carried away by floodwaters. A pumping station was installed on the dam to prevent the lake from overflowing. It took until about autumn for the Spanish Fork River diversion tunnels to be completed. Arguments started about what would happen to the dam. Some people wanted it to remain in place to keep the lake permanent. Engineers deemed this as impractical and stated a new dam would need to be constructed rather than attempting to engineer a landslide. The former residents of Thistle sued the railroad for their negligence and demanded their losses be covered. The argument was made that the railroad maintenance workers knew the ground was unstable, yet the only repair that was made was to the track rather than draining the hillside as the railroad should have. In 1993, Thistle landowners were awarded $1.1 million for their damages. Economic damages were estimated at around $513 million to $1.27 billion. The landslide blocked crucial trade routes for oil, gypsum, coal, uranium, and a plethora of other commodities. The Denver and Rio Grande Western Railway suffered an $80 million loss from the slide as well. Today, all that remains of Thistle are the foundations of a few buildings, a barn, and a single submerged home. The remaining mud lake, high watermark, and flooded ruins are an echo to a tragedy that could have been prevented had the railroad simply drained and reinforced the hillside. The site of Thistle is now the Utah County Sheriff's Office firing range, used for recurrent training and initial training of SWAT officers. Graffiti and vandalism litter the exposed rock faces and remaining foundations in the valley. Much of the land that used to be Thistle is up for sale, and its future is undetermined. Most likely, it'll be purchased by a rancher and see continued use as a homestead and grazing lands. If you like this video, be sure to check out the other videos in my Ghost Towns and Abandoned Places playlist. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Consider becoming a patron to support my work. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.